This week we saw quite a few teams unveil their 2021 packages. We saw the Mercedes, the Alpine, the Aston Martin, the Haas and the Williams. And honestly, it's been a chaotic week for car launches. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. I am your host, Steph Wentworth from All About Steph One on YouTube. And joining me today, we have a very multicultural group. We have a guy from Down Under. We've got a guy from over in Canada. And firstly, we've got an engineering student, Owen Medford. And we have a passionate fan and ex-motorsport worker, Steve Jackson from Down Under in New Zealand. And we have another very, very special guest. We have Lucas Racic here from the Racic channel on YouTube. Do you want to just talk a little bit about your channel and how you uh, fell in love with Formula One? Just to give everyone a bit of background and we can send all the listeners your way. The truncated version, because it's a bit <laughs> of a joke. Yes, I have a YouTube channel under my name and I typically talk about games and I do so for the most part. This is my first time on a podcast that is not specifically about the topic of gaming, but I've I grew up with Formula One, binging video games in that series of, of depicting that sport for a long time. Came back to it very recently and binge the sport, watch um, all of the content that I can get on it. And very recently, I've even started with a couple friends, our own custom F1 championship called the Shambles Championship, and for good reason. <laughs> but yes, there's definitely a lot of passion uh, that most of us have for the sport uh, and looking at it. And yeah, I'm very excited to be here to talk with other F1 fans. Yeah. Because outside <laughs> of that group, it's not too much. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't worry. There's a big, there's a big group all listening right now. Um, so hi everyone, welcome. Um, we're going to talk about the car launches today and the car launches that have happened. So obviously we've got the Mercedes, Alpine, Aston Martin, Haas, and the Williams. We'll just go through them and see what we're all thinking because I feel like some of them are a little bit controversial. So let's just start off with the Mercedes. Instant opinions when they unveiled the W12, what were they? Someone comment, one word opinion, let's start with. Go. Same. Okay. I was going to go with that one. I was going <laughs> to go with hiding now. Sorry. I was going to go with AMG. Because that's, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's yes. a good one. Because like I launched my Twitter page and I go through the feed and it, like uh, the F1 people I follow, all of them are just repeating AMG, AMG. And I'm like, the fuck are they talking about? Are they having an aneurysm? <laughs> and then I see the car and I'm like, oh, I understand what they mean now. Yeah, there's there's AMG plastered all over the car if you haven't seen it. Um, oh, Wayne, let's just talk talk me through. What do you think Mercedes were thinking when they decided to go with this in this direction? The road car project. That's that's how it is. That's <laughs> that's why it's named what it is. It's you know you know we're obviously we're going to call it the W12, but it's the it's you know to give it its full name, it's the Mercedes AMG F1 W12 E Performance, which is just all about the road car. You know, Mercedes has had a lot of success marketing their vehicles off off this uh, sort of unprecedented run of success, and uh, that that's what that's what it's for. That's why. <laughs> I mean, when mm -hmm. I heard the concept of the vehicle starting with the black livery that they used last year to coincide with the Black Lives Matter movement that Lewis Hamilton was very much pushing um, to promote, you know, when I heard the concept of transitioning from that to the traditional silver arrow at the back in my head, you know, I'm like going, yeah, that actually makes a ton of sense. You know, you want to maintain the Mercedes iconography uh, while not getting rid of that message. But I just when I look at the car, I go, that's the that's how you decided to portray it like i was you know i was thinking in a much more over using color much more than logos i guess is what i was thinking instead of just using the amg logo as like the traditional stars that they used before i don't think maybe that was the concept they had but i felt like it didn't really translate um yeah from concept yeah i kind of i get where you're what you're picking up on and i don't even think the back of it is necessarily the normal silver that we no. see on the silver arrows it's kind of really white and gray wishy-washy so mm -hmm. i'm not i'm honestly i'm not gonna lie i'm not a fan of this car and it's because i think the w11 last year set such high standards it was absolutely stunning i don't know what you guys are thinking but that's honestly one of my favorite liveries that we've ever seen i just think it was absolutely gorgeous and the fact that mercedes have got rid of it and got this amg plastered on the back is just so disappointing to me steve what do you make of it I saw it as a bit of a uh, bit of a miscommunication between what was discussed in the boardroom versus what went down to the design team when they actually created the delivery. There were obviously hints, I think Toto Wolf said on a couple of occasions last year and 
I think Mercedes themselves said a couple of times last year as well that AMG would become a more prominent name on the car. And I was hoping for something a bit more, a bit more creative. In my head, I was actually, I, I, I was, I was hoping they'd do uh, something similar to what we've seen on uh, on a couple of their uh, their GT customer cars, like the uh, the Helps Racing team incorporate AMG into that overall livery really nicely without making it look. Mm-hmm like a copy paste because uh, really they've just taken the AMG badge, blown it up on the, uh, on the safety cell on the side a wee bit more and plastered it all over the back. And yeah, it's not, to me, it's not especially creative, but such a massive corporate entity that, uh, you know, that Mercedes are a massive corporate entity. So naturally they are going to uh, defer to the, um, I think the safer option. Do you think it could have been any better if the AMGs were smaller because even if we're looking at this on track I don't think we're particularly going to notice the fact that it says AMG all over the back I know and the cars are not going to be still on track so that we can actually see that it says AMG would the car look better if the AMGs were smaller and it kind of resembled the star pattern that we'd had in the last couple of years yeah I think that was that was quite a nice livery because if you like it, it looks looked like a polka dot pattern from afar until you got yeah. a little bit closer and you see they're actually the you know small Mercedes stars and I, I loved that they had the uh the one-off red star on each side uh just as a bit of a nod to uh mm-hmm. to the late uh Nicky Lauda as well um I think um I mean, they're, they're, like making them smaller would have been, you know, a, a really good choice. There was a render I was trying to find this morning, actually. Cannot seem to locate it, but somebody took one AMG logo, blew it up, rotated it about 30 degrees. So it's actually in line with the uh, the fit, the shark oh. fin down each side. And it actually looked really, really good. Uh, so, yeah, I think. Of all the choices they could have made, they've made the uh, probably not the worst. It could have looked. It, it could look Definitely. worse. I think it's just safe. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that, as you say, that probably was the. I wouldn't be surprised if the car beforehand had smaller AMG logos until someone came in and said, "You can't see this when the car is moving." Yeah. I'm not understanding yeah. that if that's yeah. the case, they probably should go with what you suggest of having one big fat logo across. Because yeah, these are F1 cars. You're not going to, you know, how many of us? A lot of people, you know, don't even know, don't know who Husky Chocolate is because it's on the back of a wing that goes up in DRS. So it's like, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, blowing up the AMG logos on the sides of that um multiple times is going to fix if that's even the issue that we're going on i mean that's the only thing i can yeah. imagine the sort of the connection in my head yeah i mean nobody misses bwt do no. they <laughs> no, that's no. giant <laughs> so yeah mercedes <laughs> you can take a leave out a racing point from last year so are we going to give the mercedes a yay or a nay is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down i feel like it's almost either is almost getting too much credit it's like i want to say meh Okay, thumbs in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It's like a six out of ten, maybe. Like I, I like yeah. I like that they've actually cleaned up the lines. It's actually a bit like the, the Ineos branding is now well, yes. at least the hoop and, and the engine cover is like you know, straighter lines, you know, the mm-hmm. sort of flashes of Patronus green that, that I think I, I think a few years ago they, they said that they were to like accentuate where the airflow goes. Um they're squared off now a little bit it looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised there's actually not more Ineos branding, but I don't think sort of red and and, and sort of that, that bluey, tealy green um, <laughs> go so well. <laughs> Maybe you know that's, what? I, yeah. don't, I don't hate the Ineos branding as much as I had in previous years. I don't think it looks that bad this year. I almost wonder if me. they could have incorporated that with the AMG thing that they were going for. I almost wonder if like a black and red car, Ooh. like at the top end, might have mm. looked better than this weird amalgam of black, white, turquoise, and red at the top. It's a little bit of yeah. a cluster. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mercedes, come on. You need a better stick to a color palette. Stick. I'm guessing. Are you black or silver? <laughs> I'm guessing red, just in general, though, because of Ferrari is just, it gives every team a yeah. little bit of apprehension. Yeah, well, we haven't seen the Ferrari livery yet, but surprise, surprise, it probably is going to be red. So Mercedes might want to stick away from red. But let's move on and let's talk about the Alpine, which is a completely brand new livery. Obviously, Renault, the bright yellow car, was rebranding itself for the 2021 season. And so we were no longer going to have a bright yellow car. And when the Alpine revealed itself, the A521, it was, you know, it was quite nice. It's I I like it personally. I think it's a really nice, um, glossy 
bright shade of blue and I am I am one of those people that hates the amount of blue that there is on the track because there's just so much but you know what I quite like this livery what do you guys think what do you guys make of it I'm thinking of if you had to, if you did what I'm guessing you would like, which is, hey, guys, only one team can have blue. Fight for it. Um, <laughs> I would want Alpine to be the one that runs okay. with it. Because I think they've got the best looking blue car. I think if I, just in, in general, I think them and to spoil my opinion ahead of time, I think them and Aston Martin have got really good looking cars this year, especially because when I saw the they revealed with the with the testing livery initially, the black one with the um, uh, blue and red colors at the back. And at first I'm going, I think that's a good base. I just hope that they can maybe yeah. tweak that a little on. And that seems to me what they've done with the full launch car, with the full um, blue livery. I think it's a really good looking car. I know uh, people did joke that the initial reveal looked like Pepsi Zero, and now it looks like a regular mm -hmm. Pepsi can. So a little bit too close in that instance, but just in terms of the car itself and the way they balance their sponsorships, I think it is a very good looking machine. And while I will miss the yellow car, I think this is a good replacement. Yeah, I miss the yellow. Steve, what do you make of it? I'm a fan of blue, as you can probably tell by the color of my headphones. Um, <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. The winter livery had me a bit worried. I was uh, I was under the impression that they were going to go uh, down the same path as Reno with a predominantly black car when they could have done so much more. But no, it looks incredible. Really suits the uh, the lines of the car. Reno's performance in more recent years, sort of, uh, I if the car looks as it goes as quickly as it looks, then obviously they've turned a corner. But um, yeah, I think I'll I'll reserve judgments until I can see it going quickly. But so far, I'm I'm really really chuffed with it. I think they've hit the nail on the head in terms of the blue. I'm a massive classic rally fan, so that blue really jumps out at me as well. Um, yeah. Instantly uh, brings back memories of watching old videos on YouTube and watching uh, uh, classic rally meets with my dad and that sort of thing. So yeah, love it, love it. Oh, that was a very glowing review. Owen, are you gonna continue are you gonna continue the positive affirmations for Alpine? I mean it's only gonna get um, better. Oh. <laughs> oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> so it's it's only gonna get better because uh I, I said in my I think the exact you the exact wording I used was resplendent because it's oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it looks so good. Like I I I think they got Sean Bull in the sort of like he does renders for mm. sort of what things could look like uh and you know they, they've taken what they uh they use in wec uh and endurance racing and, and they've and they've used it on this and it just it looks brilliant in in my opinion you know they've picked the perfect i mean i'm i, I didn't pick this wall but i i'm i'm again a fan of blue <laughs> it, and they've picked the, the, just the right shot like they've done an excellent job you know I, I, I just think it's great i'm not i'm not so much of a fan of the black sort of bottom of the car because uh, mm. they, they, there's a sort of like, maybe it's just shaded in the photos because that's quite hard to analyze against. But that's the only reason I don't like it. <laughs> that's the only thing. I think this car is going to look stunning in at the night races with all yes. of the lights on top of them. I think this is the car that's probably going to look the best. Just I just think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous with the glossy and the shot. Oh, I'm just so excited because we're going to start off straight in Bahrain as well. So we're going to get to see what it looks mm -hmm. like in at the night time um and so that's what i'm most excited for as well because i love the way the cars look under the lights and we're gonna have quite a few night races this year so i'm really really looking forward to that that's what i'm looking forward to but i feel like we were all quite positive about alpine i feel like we like it I don't think, yeah, there's not really too much to overly criticize in terms of with Renault, they're going to not have, it's going to be their performance that's analyzed. It's not going to be the vehicle's appearance at all in the season. Okay. Yes. A hot yeah. take. Very real. Very yeah. make it very true. Makes sense. I think they made steps forward, to be honest, from what I can see on it, because they, they've, they've changed it significantly. Like if you did that looking at the if you look at the Renault long enough like I do because I'm a bit weird you notice the engine cover like the last year's Renault is that is the most uh, sort of squared of all the others it doesn't taper in very much and they seem to have moved they, they seem to have changed that like just sort of a technical note like they, they seem to have slimmed down the side pods a bit and moved the some of the radiators and the intercoolers up up and it's very very bulbous on the top of it I don't know if that's going to make an issue of it that's just my thoughts on that. Well, the read on Renault in general seemed to be that they had speed and they always had for a long time where they seemed to be lacking was mainly on tighter circuits that are more like it, like Monaco, like in the same way that Red Bull would excel at Monaco, they would excel at a place like um, Belgium or Monza or a very power based sort of circuit. And it seems like mm -hmm. in the last bunch of years that where they made major strides last year was addressing 
that low downforce end uh, at slower speeds and getting better there. Yeah, I'm honestly really excited for the Alpine and how Alonso is going to handle it in particular because I think Daniel Ricciardo did a great job of showing the limits of what he was of what the Renault was capable of last year. But now we've got old Nando back and he's going to get in that car and do do some oh some naughty little things for that Alpine. So yeah, if we can see it on the podium, that well obviously we won't see the car on the podium, but yeah, if that Alpine I think could do really well and then it will be you know at the top of everyone's lists on the podium. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Okay, but I think the overall gist is that it's a big yes to Alpine. Yeah? Yeah, and design yeah, yeah. and the look of it. I, I am... Think absolutely. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, you go. Just going to circle back to what you said before. I think the, the talking needs to be done on track for Reno. Well, sorry, for Alpine. I'm going to have to get used to this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I spent most of the season last year calling Alpha Terry Toro Rosso. So, yeah, I, it's they're in a bit of a weird position in terms of their leadership structure. Obviously, uh Cyril Abitable has uh, left yeah. for still a undiagnosed reason. Uh, Laurent Rossi has obviously taken over as Alpine CEO and they've bought in uh, a couple of new faces, Davida Brivio from MotoGP as well, from the uh, Suzuki squad. So uh, they've got a really good pair of hands, but there's no single pair of hands steering the ship. It sounds like they've got a bit of a, a collaborative uh, management agreement in place and uh, how that works out I don't know but they've got two very competent drivers I'm a big fan of Esteban Ocon or always have been I think he's massively underrated and Fernando's proven himself time and time again as a horrendously quick driver provided he's got the equipment so we'll see. I'd also say that Alonso himself is probably one of the most complete drivers as well, just oh, in yeah. terms of the ability to be quick and qualifying in the race, generally being clean. Like you don't really see him pulling the kind of dirty moves that you sometimes see. I mean, I like, in, I'm all for, you know, sort of villains on circuit. I like uh, drivers that can cause chaos, but I don't think Alonso is that character. And I think that's what's made him stand out is that he, he can be a world champion more in the sense of like a Hakkinen rather than a Schumacher. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with everything that we're talking about. So yeah, we're looking forward to Renault. I think that's one we're, that we're all uh, Alpine. Oh, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting it's the, re, the rebranding all year. I think what Steve really hits the nail on the head though is that it's a rebranding, not just an appearance. It's not like a uh, a Toro Rosso Alphatari thing where yeah. most of the same people in the car. It's going to be, as you say, different leadership, different looks. It's going to be different drivers in the case of Alonso. So yeah, we'll be curious to see. Mm -hmm, definitely but moving on we have another team which has rebranded and i'm probably going to continuously call racing point but we have aston martin which unveiled the amr 21 and it's green who <laughs> who would have thought I think a lot of people were terrified of the initial because people were concepting the watermelon liveries with the B with the big WT. But I think um, Aston addressed that pretty well. And I think it's at least in my opinion, they've got a really good looking car on their hands. Part of me wants them to at least have a little bit more of a traditional British racing green. But I can also understand that that's exactly what people were probably expecting. Yeah. And they maybe wanted to avoid that immediate prediction. Definitely. Wayne, what do you make of the livery? I'm not a fan. <laughs> Uh, Me too. It must, like it's got I, I, the the problem is I think like it is at least the the sort of the pink flashes on it. I know I know why they're there. Obviously, <laughs> it's the BWT sponsorship. But like I was hoping that they'd be more like their endurance racing stuff because there there were there were renders floating around of the sort of lime green that they use on that, marking out the sort of where the pink is and then sort of a, a black shark fin section. And that looks that looks sublime. And I think we just we just missed out on it a little bit. But then to, to, I, I don't think that's gonna matter. You know, as we've just said for, for Alpine, like it's it's I think a, a an extra year and, a, and some extra money is gonna take what was sort of 2019's Mercedes, it's still going to be quick. So I think if they can sort out the issues they had with a bit of consistency, with it with a more an even more powerful Mercedes power unit, I think I think they're going to the to the front of the grid. 
Or they go hilariously it, backwards and I'll be proved wrong. I was going to say, I, I find it interesting <laughs> to hear that because you know, my case was, you know, when I booted up a set of cars of Competizione and then seeing, you know, the Aston Martin uh, cars, which I hadn't seen in a while because I'd sort of, I fell into F1 more recently and then steadily getting into others. I see the Aston Martin, I go, no, I don't like that at all. I don't like that bright uh, lime green. I was always a big fan of their old um, DB9 Le Mans cars uh, or GT cars and, um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Aston Martin does have a good looking machine. I, there's definitely things they could tweak and things that I think could be changed. But I mean, it's, I think me and Owen are definitely on opposite ends of <laughs> expectation of going in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I, 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 do you know what? I don't I disagree on like a podcast. It. Is that possible? Uh, surely not. Um, I, especially on, especially me on a podcast. I, I mean, say, I if we can bring this disagreement out to about eight minutes, so we can clip that, that'd be great. Uh, no, what I was saying is that um, I, I don't not like it. I think it's nice, but I don't think there's anything special about it. Like mm. when the, I know I'm talking about the W11 quite a lot, but when that came out, I was like, wow, beautiful. But with this one, it's just kind of a green car with. The little bit of pink, which I actually really like. I like the accent of pink. But then it's just kind of got its sponsors just kind of plonked on the car without much thought. And I don't really think there's much of a um, developed design aspect into how they incorporated all of the sponsors. Like, even with Mercedes and putting the AMG all over, over there, at least they were kind of trying to incorporate the sponsors in a different way to just sticking them on the side of the car. I agree in the sense that they could have made, like, I think uh, the Aston Martin logo should be on the wing like it was for Red yeah. Bull. The JCB on it really stands out mm. in that color scheme as well. Uh, that's just a particularly, I mean, this is, I'm sure the designers themselves, when they're doing this, they're probably pulling their hair out, you know, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how do we get JCB to fit green and pink? That doesn't fucking add up at all, but uh I mean, they. I feel like they did what they could, and I think that's the thing. Is I was going in there with very low expectations of what they're going to bring out, and I'd much rather have a decent-looking, clean car rather than a complete, like you know, avant-garde mess. Of yeah, stuff. yeah. I think that's where I went wrong. My expectations are definitely too high. <laughs> so <laughs> next year, I will be lowering those expectations. But no, I don't hate it. It's not. It's not bad. Yeah. I just think it's a bit safe, and I kind of wanted a little bit. I just. I wanted a little bit more. I don't know what I wanted. I'll know it when I see it. But... Well, I, mean, I feel like that's that's going to be interesting when we get to Williams later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, let's, just, let's not talk about that yet. Um, Steve, what did you make of the Aston Martin livery? I think they've missed a bit of an opportunity with this uh, with this rebrand. The the uh, one of the reasons I, I I I'm a massive fan of Racing Point for a few reasons. The main one has left and has now gone to Red Bull, but that's for another uh, that's for another podcast. The the pink stood out. You knew exactly what it was. I'm afraid they've sort of they've fired a bit of a blank in terms of the uh, the livery. It looks it looks good. If I was a corporate business suit person and <laughs> just wanted to see a livery and I worked for Cognizant or JCB or BWT or whoever, I'd be very happy with that because it's very clear what that car is. But there's abs it doesn't look like they've had much uh, design, input, design input with it. It looks more like a corporate logo that was signed off in a boardroom, sent downstairs, for and, and to be honest, done in an afternoon. And I don't want to come across like I'm rubbishing the work that these designers put yeah. into their cars because it's an incredible amount of work. But whether it was restrictions or purely a bit of um, bit of a, a time issue because of the, the BWT thing didn't seem to be confirmed until quite close Late. to the livery reveal as well. Yeah. Um, like there were rumours of them going to Williams, rumours of them going to Haas, rumours of them disappearing altogether from the sport. So it just... It feels like they've, I think they may have had a few different liveries on ice for a couple of different eventualities, depending on where certain sponsorship ended up. Um, and this is obviously the one that that's, uh, you know, that they've decided to roll with. And it, it looks like they've just painted it green, put a bit of pink down the side. I think that pink is just a missed opportunity. They could have done so much more with that without making it look like a watermelon. <laughs> um, and, um, and just plastered some uh, some stickers all over it. It's, it's a safe livery it doesn't really strike me as something overly exciting. And I think, um, especially that they've brought on, they've brought on Sebastian Vettel, you know, they've got 
a massive opportunity to just paint themselves as a as a future world champion winning you know future world championship there we go winning team and it just uh, yeah it's fallen a bit flat for me it's safe based on the concepts in general i think the big takeaway that most people had is that we're expecting just more aston martin Mm. uh, iconography on the car itself it feels as you say like a little bit more safe and corporate rather than the return of a legendary brand yeah, yeah, yeah. especially just... with the amount of money that Lawrence Stroll has injected into this uh, into mm-hmm. this rebrand, it just it's almost like he's gotten three quarters of the way through and just gone. I'm not as excited about this as I was, or you know, I could have bought <laughs> a boat for that money instead, or you know, it just it 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 doesn't. Well, because isn't Aston he also Martin tied himself... to a lot of shareholders as well? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. It's just. Like I said, I think I think it's a safe livery to please a number of different sponsors, a number of different stakeholders, and I mean, it, yeah, it just it's a shrug your shoulders kind of livery to me. Yeah, I've just had. Go a oh, go on. I've had a thought. Yeah. Well, it looks like a, like we've all, we've been making jokes for a year now about how it looks like a Mercedes. I'm just thinking if they had like it's a dark car, and I imagine I imagine under like in daylight because it's a studio shot, it may get a bit sort of darker looking. And when it's moving quite quickly on track, I think if they'd have like incorporated the lime green, like I said, it would have just looked like a Mercedes. Yeah. Um, I am, however, surprised. I, I I'm surprised I didn't think of this earlier, but for me, the branding between Aston Martin being powered by Mercedes and the Vantage road car, which is, a, if you don't know, um, mm-hmm. is a it's powered by a Mercedes V8. And I'm surprised that they didn't make more of that because it, to me, the, 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 the ability to sell those two things together, you know, w- with success from one being, you know, leading into success for their, for their road car is, I, I think that's a massive missed opportunity, to be honest. I, th- I thought they'd make more of that, you know, that I thought somewhere on it, it would say maybe like on, on that sort of power bulge that they've had to add this season on, on, on under the engine cover, I thought they'd put, you know, powered by Mercedes Benz, but they, they've missed it. I think it's a big missed opportunity there. Yeah, I feel like McLaren as well had didn't have a lot of powered by Mercedes branding. Yeah. I don't think yeah. any of the teams have any visual reference to Mercedes power on their cars, do they? Yeah. I, I feel like that's to... definitely an intention then. There's probably something mm, with yeah. Mercedes that are saying, we don't want to be a Ferrari situation. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it's a bygone era, to be honest, of the of the you know McLaren Mercedes where they did have that sort of on the car. So I think that it's probably to do with that, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they don't like, you know, the slowest team on the grid also being referenced by Mercedes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. In that case, so maybe maybe that's part of the motivation. I don't know. Yeah, there's probably something in there. Uh, if we keep digging, we'll find it. But I think the overall consensus is that Aston Martin was a missed opportunity. It was a little bit safe, but it's nice. It's fine. It's, you know, palatable. <laughs> maybe that's too harsh maybe that's really harsh we like it it's not our favorite so that's the uh, that's the verdict for Aston Martin let's move on to Haas and honestly Haas is Haas's livery is basically a Russian flag is it the not? jokes make themselves like <laughs> you, you can't avoid it's not even a case of like oh we're just it's not like a meme that goes on to the point of people you know regurgitating it to the point you want to vomit it's just you can't help it you look at it you think rush I as soon as I saw it Russian national anthem is playing in my <laughs> head from old Call of Duty games <laughs> it was I can't avoid that I think the thing yeah. for me is that the world uh, anti-doping agency is is investigating it because it's it's so on the nose you know if they get away with it then pff, they're geniuses apparently but I'd, 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 I'm preferring to think based on my opinions of one of their drivers that um, it's actually the red white and blue of the United States and the red white and blue of their, their forward operating base in Oxfordshire those two together that's how I don't I- buy it um, that's how I'm preferring to think of it. Um, you know, just put those together. Look that's... at it, though. Just look at it. <laughs> See the order of the colors. No. I, 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 the thing, okay, the thing that kind of occurred to me, because I was looking at it again this morning before we started recording, and I was looking at it thinking, you know, here's, it's not a bad-looking car by any means. It kind of reminds me of the Williams car from last year in terms of the lines on the car, where its sponsorships are located. So it, like, is a safe kind of design. It's the irony of the team that it's on. 
Yeah. It's the Haas logo with a Russian <laughs> looking flag. <laughs> And the tiny, tiny American flag um, just yes. below. The, oh, that honestly <laughs> yeah. was, uh, that's what sent me, just the tiny little Russian flag. It's like, oh no, the tiny little American, that's what I meant, the tiny little American flag <laughs> right above the entire livery, which is the Russian flag. It's like, oh, is this team, is this team actually American? No, no, this team is Russian now. If it's I no was, if American. I was writing, if I was writing a script where I had a situation where characters were having their team be bought up by another company from another nation, this is exactly how I'd, I'd portray it. You'd put the big, massive country colors on the front wing and put a tiny little other one on the back somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just sad that we're not, that because of the FRA's rules on multiple liveries, that we're not going to get uh, Mick Schumacher having the, the German flag on there, because that... Oh, I know! It looks, that that one looked good. That one looked really, mm. that, that had that had the sort of echoes of a 90s football shirt, that one. <laughs> I can yeah, understand not concept. wanting... Yeah, like I can understand not wanting two cars to look completely different kind of the way that it is in IndyCar because I love IndyCar. I love the races, but part of me does still get a little bit confused when I see two completely different looking cars and they say they're teammates. I'm going, How? Monkey, <laughs> my monkey brain's not aligning this. So you need to account for that. But I do wish they could at least play with them a little bit. Like they could have, I understand that F1 cars do have like a little stripe on the top to signify the drivers in them. I wish that could be extended almost a little bit so they could have a thing like a German flag being on there with Mick Schumacher um because mm. yeah that I think it would it wouldn't completely override the original livery while making it at least a little bit distinct for that driver yeah I agree even I think Mercedes do they have different colored halos for the two drivers to distinguish them I think they, they have a purple yeah they did yeah mm -hmm. I think that was just at Monaco so, for Nicky Lauda. There was, there was a little shading on there I think so Lewis's was yeah. purple oh, yeah, yeah I thought Lewis's yeah, no, was purple was yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It would be nice if they could do something a little bit, but even just that little difference. Or maybe you've got this one one thing that's always the same on each car. I don't know. I would like for there to be a little bit more room for negotiation with um, mm. liveries yeah. looking different because especially, you know, Mercedes concept livery for, was it 2020, 2019 Hockenheim when they were celebrating 125 years. That was yeah. great. But why can't we have, you know, that every time with a little bit of, difference between <laughs> each driver's I maybe not every time because that would be very confusing for me I'm very confusing for the casual fan <laughs> on special occasions though yeah I mean like I, yeah. mean, I wasn't a I wasn't a fan of the maroon color they used for Ferrari Mugello but it was nice mm. to see some variety and yeah. I wouldn't mm. if they did on special occasions I don't I wouldn't see the issue in it personally like as long as it wasn't a every team is gonna do this thing yeah if one car one race changed their livery I wouldn't care too much the, the yeah, cynic yeah. in me says that they'd start selling those livery changes for yeah. free at that point, though. <laughs> That's probably another reason why uh, the FIA probably uh, put in that rule. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It's logical, even though we uh, want to change it. But, oh, who doesn't want to change all the rules? It's like um, how drivers want refueling, you know, despite... I mean, they can watch uh, Joss Verstappen and get set on fire, you know, 800 times. Yeah, like, yeah. I still want refueling, though, because um, they just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine the different strategies, though? Oh, I would be excited. We don't that, have to. Yeah, we saw them. Excited. They were so good. <laughs> <laughs> Four pit stops in one race. Who doesn't want that? Just for something. <laughs> it only happened um, one time. <laughs> yeah, going back to Haas. Going back to Haas. Let's just talk about the lack of sponsorship because I think that's something that yeah. was very apparently clear when we saw the livery. I think there's only about five sponsors on there. And two of them are on every single car. So mm. Mm, how is that going to affect Haas? And is that hinting at a buyout from Mr. Mazepin Sr. in the near future? Because this, this, it seems like we're heading in that direction. Yeah, Gene Haas hasn't been overly... <sighs> Some of the wording that he's used of late around um, just, just his thoughts on Formula One in general have... I do wonder if there's a there's a potential buyout in the next couple of years. Obviously, Haas have signed the new Concord Agreement through to, oh, when is it, 2025 or whenever it is. Yeah. So they're locked in for a few more years. Obviously, they can leave early. There are break clauses, but that costs money. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mazepin Sr. did make a uh, an offer to purchase the team in the next couple of years. Obviously, he's got, uh, I believe, Earl Kelly as his own company is that correct I believe so 
we can hold on. I'll yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So he's um, like he's al- he's already sort of you know um, uh, put his name on the car in, in a sense. Anyway, the thing that irritates me with this livery is um, is going back to the anti-doping agency thing. Mazepin has said himself that he doesn't quite know how he's going to resolve what flag he races under because any any Russian athlete who competes under this ban basically has to be a Russian athlete competing under a neutral flag or like a a non-Russian flag he hasn't said how he's going to resolve that yet and Haas have kind of done it for him by plastering the Russian flag all over the car and it's it's obviously it's being investigated I would not be surprised if we see another livery at testing a very hurried one or I wouldn't be that surprised either yeah, it just, it seems, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a bit of pressure from Mazepin to, to uh, Mazepin Senior to have the national iconography of, uh, of Russia on the car. Obviously, he's paying quite a bit of money to put his, uh, uh, to, to have his son in the car and have his brand on there as well. So, uh, yeah, whether, whether that livery remains, I'm not sure. I'm going to say it won't. I think we'll end up with, uh, with a red, white and black house again, same as last year with some slightly different sponsorship sponsorship but the lack of sponsorship is quite concerning if they get rid of the livery i can't wait for the interviews i'm gonna be so <laughs> looking forward to seeing the drivers be forced to dance around that chair and not sit in it and yeah. confront the actual answer um yeah that's yeah my heart aches for for mick at the minute and how yeah. he's gonna have to deal with all of this because obviously he's at, He's a German that's having to race in a in a Russian car because <laughs> mm-hmm. that's what it is. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and there's all of this controversy surrounding his teammate, and that's where a lot of the focus is for Haas right now. There's a lot of anger directed that way. So the part of me really <laughs> feels for him having to deal with being in this environment and just ride it out until he gets that boost what up do you, to that what do you guys, seat. <laughs> what do you all you guys think about the rumors that Rich Energy is going to get involved back in again because of oh, their connection God. to Mazepin? God. Oh God! <laughs> I think I feel the exact same as Owen. <laughs> um, I didn't think that Haas could plumb depths further than they did with the Rich Energy fiasco. Yeah. That was that was just that was painful to watch. And uh, the this uh, the, this livery and the controversy around it to me, in a way, is worse because it's quite clearly an attempt to just like circumvent a uh, an anti-doping agency mandate basically that you can't have russian iconography on on in sport for the next two mm-hmm. years and it's just going to look even worse if there's a bit of black with a bit of gold writing with <laughs> the name of some oh no I, I i have thoughts on this individual i can't really say them on the podcast um what i will say is that he's um I don't think he's capable of doing anything that he says he's planning on doing. And that <laughs> lovely little video of him sitting in an armchair, yeah. what I assume is the Natural History Museum or somewhere where he's not allowed, yeah. is, uh, is, is just talk. Because yeah. that's all he is. Because yeah. he's done it before as well. And it's the, because I mean, my in- initial reaction is there's absolutely no way. Because Haas, you know, they're a long, they used to, you know, compete directly against Chip Ganassi ra- Racing, I believe, back in the kart days. They've been a premier mm. NASCAR team for years. They've been like very successful in multiple areas of motorsport. And they've, as a result, dealt with controversies pretty similar to the Rich Energy thing from 2019. And in those situations, they did not ever even consider going back to companies like that that fucked with them in that type of way um but for rich energy the only way that could be is if haas were to sell out and cash in because and i wouldn't blame gene haas either because the last years have not been good for that team unfortunately Mm. uh, ever since their high point in 18. f1 costs so much money and even though there's a budget cap coming in it's still a lot of money like 130 million is not cheap and if you're spending that on a failing proposition then if you take that out, then that's the only way I could see that type of sponsor getting back in again, uh, yeah. is if they just exited entirely. Yeah, I I personally, I think Haas would be um, very naive to think to bring back Rich Energy and think they will be any different. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I'm thinking. Like Haas is, Gene is the opposite of naive, so yeah. I don't think he would ever touch it, but maybe someone else who replaces him would. Yeah. 
definitely. I think there's a lot to discuss when we come to Haz and its livery. We might have to do another show when we analyze what the new Haz livery is going to look they, like in two weeks' time. They <laughs> just keep giving Netflix content <laughs> on and off track. It's, yeah, it's an amazing, it's, yeah, it's, it's painful for them, but God, is it entertaining to watch. It is. It I, is. I, I would just imagine be if, <laughs> I just imagine if, if we had things like Drive to Survive back in the late 90s when MasterCard Lola oh, turned up for one yes. race. And it just, like, this is just a, a like, a protract, like, just a very drawn out version of the MasterCard Lola fiasco, just underfunded, mm-hmm. rushed, no real sense of direction. And just, they will, like, if, if anything is an absolute, it's that if, if Haas do not change the direction they're going in quickly, and I mean, they might even struggle to make the grid next year at this rate if the car goes how it looks, which I don't imagine will be very quickly. We won't see Haas on the grid next year, or we will see Haas, but they will be called something else and they will be owned by a Russian. Yeah. Because Gene Haas will just pull the plug and he's got every right to. I can't blame him for pulling out. I think he's come into Formula One initially with a good attitude. Obviously, that's changed, and I think he's just, um, I get the impression he's quite bitter about the whole thing. Um, and it's that team, it's the, it's the mechanics, it's the drivers, it's the, it's the, the you know, it's the, the team itself who loses out. Yeah, not to keep banging on about this, because there's our, our other subjects, but I do think it's the, it's the fact that they fell off so quickly, that is probably what is Sour Gene's attitude. It's the fact that, you know, in one season, they were so close to beating Renault and were probably dreaming yeah. of fighting for the top three teams. Um, to go from that to having a, having to keep keep up with Williams in the final races of that, of that year, you know, it's a real struggle for them, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hase's on the struggle boss. Delivery's on the struggle boss. Finance is on the struggle boss. The driver is also on the struggle bus. Has honestly, we just don't know where Haas is going to go. So we'll move on. We'll definitely come to Haas in another episode. So stay tuned to that because there will be a whole episode dedicated to Haas in the near future. But we've got one final livery to discuss, and it is the Williams, which they released earlier this week. This one has caused a bit of controversy, and it was really unfortunate because Williams wanted to unveil this via an augmented reality app. But unfortunately, that app was hacked. And so the car, the car photos got leaked a little bit earlier. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, they were a little bit disappointed when we saw them. Uh, Ewain, do you want to just start us off with, uh, with, with the Williams? <laughs> okay. Where do, I mean, it, like you say, it's, it's incredibly disappointing that, you know, some individuals have taken it upon themselves yeah. to, to ruin, you know, what would have been a, a very carefully planned and, and you know, and no doubt expect like, well, <laughs> as we've seen in the UK, app development isn't cheap. And and from what we've heard on tweets since that, the, you know, the early betas of the app were actually very good. And it would have been, it would have been really nice for fans to see an F1 car that way, if, if only just to be a bit close to the sport, because I think some people can feel a bit sort of disconnected, you know, with mm-hmm. what, how big, uh, what what an F one car is like in in person. I mean, the fact that they're displaying it with this car, on the other hand, though, is not it's not my thing. I don't like it. I, don't, I apparent I've heard rumours that it was uh, sort of inspired by the uh, FW fourteen B, obviously very very iconic car. But as far as I can tell, that's only in colour. You know, it's it's sort of iterative on last year in some ways, but also it's completely new in a way that I'm not sure I like. It's it's also very odd in in comparison to the other Mercedes powers teams that they've they've chosen to do things with the sort of bodywork that I'm not sure why they've done that, but <laughs> I'm sure they know what they're doing, I hope. Yeah, it's just kind of it's just kind of strange really. It just doesn't click. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird. Yeah, it's a weird. I don't really know how to think about it. I'm excited to see how it's going to look on track. I think the stripes will make it look interesting at speed. But yeah, it's. I don't know. What do you What do you guys think about it? Because I don't. I like. I'm very in two minds about how I feel about this livery so far. I like the. I like the front of the vehicle, the back. However, as soon as I saw the tweet, it came to my mind. Jimmy Broadbent said, "Oh, looks like an F1 template from the Codemasters games," and I'm like, 
it fucking does. It, it, does actually, it looks no, exactly that. like it. It's, and that's one of the things that frustrates me about the My Team mode in the Codemasters game is the fact that the liveries are so stock and that even after you apply sponsorships on them, it doesn't really look like uh, what an F1 car would on the grid. That seems to have changed, however, with Williams on the grid this year. So maybe they were accurate all along. But um, I, I like... I like weird concepts. I'd rather have a bizarre looking car than the entire team being safe. And yeah. while I've said earlier that I do like the Aston Martin design, there's no denying that it's definitely playing on the safe side. So if the entire grid was like that, like if Williams had continued their same livery from last year, I would be a little bit disappointed yeah. um, in the sense of we're kind of continuing same old tread of ground. It's I, I, I've heard the same rumors of them trying to implement the colors of their iconic vehicles from the 90s. But, yeah, I don't really see it other than adding a bit of orange to the front and then saying it's a car from the 90s. That's a little bit tacked <laughs> on. I almost feel like that might have come in last minute, maybe. But, yeah, it's yeah, kind of a mixed thing. I do think it will be looking decent at speed. And I do yeah. also hope more so that you mentioned that the bodywork change that they've done to it. Maybe it's desperation. Maybe it's who cares. We're at the back of the grid. Let's just try whatever. But maybe just give something to George has already proved himself in one race. I mean, I always think that even with his slow car, he showed his um, his talent even in that thing. But hopefully there's more chances for him to because the main issue with being at the back of the grid is that no matter how good a move of overtake you do, we're not paying attention because we're not going to put a camera at 18th place. Unless things are really boring up <laughs> Russia. Who, who said that? Yep. Who, wait, what? <laughs> That's so rude. <laughs> Hello, George. It's been a while. <laughs> um, Steve, what um what are your thoughts surrounding the new Williams? I think I'm gonna get hazed for this. Um I love it. <gasps> <gasps> so, wow. yeah, I love it. No, no, not for the not for the reasons you think. Um, the oh, nonsense about it looking like the uh, FW14B in color, vaguely, yes. Um, mm. I think if you were to look flip through recent Williams liveries for a nice, like for a good homage livery, um, was it the FW34, the one with the ugly stepped nose, which looked a bit sort of early to mid nineties Williams, just without the camel, the uh, camel sponsorship. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was a nice sort of modern take on like a on the like the classic sort of horizontal stripes along the airbox livery. What I saw immediately when I saw especially the the combination of colors, Sauber so Patronus C22. Yeah. With the yellow from the Red Bull and the the Patronus teal and the blue and that's like that's what jumped out at me and that's one of my favorite liveries. But I think um, I th I think they've done a good job. I think the car would look a lot better with a bit more I hate to say it, sponsorship because it's everywhere in Formula <laughs> 1 and in all the wrong places usually. But I think if and when they get a title sponsor this season and that will swing entirely on how this car performs and the jury's still out on that, it might it might improve. There is probably a bit too much of this weird blind arrangement along the uh, along the airbox. Um sort of digital the sort of digital camo yeah. effect on the back. I think you're right yeah. in the sense that if they got the right sponsor, it could really pop, but without anything there, it just mm. looks a little bit empty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lo and behold, they get somebody like DHL being their title sponsor, and we end up with this massive blob of red and yellow on the <laughs> on the side of the or something. We'll we'll steer away from that. But I think in terms of the color palette they've chosen, it's um it's quite reserved. It is again very corporate, but I think we can expect that from almost every team in F1 nowadays as well, especially now that Williams are not really Williams anymore. They're now owned by Doralton Capital, but mm -hmm. nice livery. Uh, obviously, there was a very big opportunity, same as with uh, with Aston Martin um, with their rebrand this year. There was an opportunity there to do something tr truly standout, exciting. And while I don't think they've quite done that, I think that they've gone away enough from the recent Williams liveries from 2018, 19, 20. Yeah. Um, to sort of signify a bit of a, a turning point. Um, uh, Owen, you mentioned before as well, the the, the actual, the, the bodywork and the, the Coke bottle section looks quite, it looks very, very tall and sort of scalloped outwards from yeah. where you imagine the intake plenum to be. I, 
looking at it, it looks like there's not really much of a scallop section out of the uh, out of the lower side pod into the floor. So it looks like they might be trying to get more airflow over top of the airbox. That's um, what. That's what I. Yeah, because they've sort of when I, I I called it the sort of triple bulge kind of thing. Mm. It looked kind. Of, I think what they're trying to do is get the air to go over the side pods and down that sort of channel. Um, yeah, specifically yeah. at the rear of the car that's just my sort of uninformed look at it but yeah and whether they're trying to do that just to make up for the loss of uh well for for more airflow bleeding around the floor into the into the floor of the car um just to try and push it down basically and give it you know give it a bit more downforce at high speed and and you know rotating into corners and that sort of thing i i don't know we've only seen certain angles of the car but they haven't they haven't been especially coy about hiding any elements of the car and it, it looks good um like there are areas where obviously it's different from last year's car the front wing's still quite primitive but it's now got the sort of scalloped sections in towards the uh and towards the nose as well a bit like what you've seen on i think every other narrow nosed car so there's there's definite steps forward so i'm hoping that this is i wouldn't expect them to be anywhere near the front but if no. they can breach <laughs> that that class C group and start playing with uh, with Alpha Tower and Alpine and that sort of thing in that midfield and in a couple of races and net some points, then that's a win. Oh well, you've got a lot more faith in Williams than I do because I'm not <laughs> sure they I'm not sure they'll I'm, have made that those uh, those strides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm incredibly biased towards Williams, um, so I mean I will blow their trumpet a wee bit, but I'm and I've said it every year. They'll do better, and they don't. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to uh, be eating my words halfway through the season if uh, <laughs> recent history is anything to go by. But the car last year obviously was an improvement over uh, over uh, 2019. Um, I don't think you can get any worse in 2019. But with the with the cash injection they're getting, the quality of drivers they've got. I mean, I think Nick Latifi will come right at some point in the season he obviously had a bit of a hard time with the car last year but he's not slow he is a he's a competent driver George Russell's obviously the standout driver for that for, uh, for that team and um they're going to have to try very hard to keep him because I mean depending on where Lewis ends up or if he ends up leaving uh for next year then um they may end up without uh, without the star driver some drivers need to get acclimated to their environment. You know, not mm. everyone's a Max Verstappen where they just show up and they immediately, you know, start fighting for podiums in their junior career. If you look at the trajectory that Nick Latifi had in F2, that was exactly the case. It was, mm. he was, you know, midfield, back of the pack, and you wouldn't assume anything looking at that. And then all of a sudden, second place in the F2 championship, and he goes to F1. And same thing yeah. with Mick Schumacher as well. He had that similar yeah. growth. And that's why I'm not putting too much pressure on him, especially in the Haas that he's in. I don't think they're going to make massive strides this year in terms of performance either. So I'm not putting too much pressure on Mick to, oh, he better be out driving that car and pull a Charles Leclerc and start finishing, you know, fifth, six in a backmarker car. It's a situation of, I do expect more from Nick this year. And yeah, George is absolutely a standout. And what after a lot of people always knew it, but it felt like uh, the secure Grand Prix, he proved it in the Mercedes and fighting with mm. Valtteri and seemingly in my mind, he won that race um, on his end, at least. So it's yeah. a case of <laughs> it's a situation of, yeah, with Williams, I, I I'm not optimistic, but I do think they're going to be on an upward trajectory. It's going to be slow, but I think they're going to be on the up and mm. up. Yeah, definitely. I don't really think there's any room for them to go down. I hope um, not, because we're so, going to start digging underneath the earth at this rate. Please, yeah. please, we've, Williams, the only way is up. <laughs> we've seen Williams come back from some shockers before. Like the uh, once they, once the Reno partnership with Williams ended, and they had those, um, I, th I think they rebranded them as Super. Tech or something awful and the, the the engines were developed large or well maintained and developed largely in-house with some external help they were um sort of f scrapping for points and then by sort of 2005 2006 with the bmw partnership it wasn't ideal but the car the the car had good bones so they are capable of making lemons out, well you know um making lemonade out of lemons um but obviously the formula one from 20 years ago is very very different to what it is now it's massively expensive and they weren't going to get anywhere with the old structure so i think the Doralton 
option that they took was do or die because uh, I think if they struggled along on their own for 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 a season or two longer they just would have vanished so it's nice to have them still here and it'll be interesting to see how far up the grid they can get in the next couple of years yeah and I'm glad that they've done something different with the library because quite often we see teams being very safe and what do Williams have to be safe with right now <laughs> you might as well just you might as well take a risk and do something different so um I'm I, I guess you've all convinced me that well not all of you but you've convinced me that this <laughs> library is not the worst it could be I mean I like last year's but it was again a little bit safe so um i don't know yeah. about you guys but i really liked um the the original livery they had with rocket before yeah, that sponsor pulled I did. out That's the unfortunate. red one blue yeah 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 i i thought of toothpaste initially but the more i looked at it the more i thought it's actually not terrible it's not bad um <laughs> it was much better than that soft fade blue to white rocket livery they had the year before yes um, but, much better i mean looking at that car basically just makes me vomit because i know how terrible it was we all do <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was it wasn't too difficult to uh to upgrade from that livery and um, so the other way is up for williams i just want to say That's in, fairness to the, in fairness to those designers it's quite hard to follow the martini livery because that's just yeah yeah that's just perfect yeah you can't beat that yeah yeah that's one of my all-time faves just love that one absolutely gorgeous fuck fuck but yeah, we're positive about Williams-ish, mostly. Uh, we think Williams is going to do better on track, so that's good. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, which one's your favourite out of the ones we've talked about today? And then uh, out of the, I mean, we haven't seen the Ferrari un unveiled yet. We don't need to. I'll it's say It's going to be, <laughs> surprise, red. So which one is your favourite out of all of the liveries that we've seen thus far? Oh, anyone? I'll yeah. Start. Oh wait, there you start. I've, I've, I've made it. I've thought, I think I've made it fairly <laughs> yeah. clear, but I'd go with the Alpine because it's just yeah. Just, just that's just that's what I'm favoring too. I'm going with Alpine, even accounting for the cars that were revealed before. I actually don't mind the Alfa Romeo this year in its look, but yeah, no, I'm going with the Alpine. I think out of the bunch we've spoken about today, it's Williams, um, just purely for trying to do something different and bringing back nostalgic memories. Favorite so far is Alfa Romeo. I think the way they've rearranged the red and white on that car, and yeah, I know I'm aware that they've just basically flipped red and white <laughs> around, um, but I think uh, the the that red's very strong. Um, and on the last year's car, it looked quite top heavy and ungainly. With it reversed, it looks looks it looks mean it looks very purposeful it's the same as what alpha Tauri have done like they've basically they've almost reversed the color palette on the car so there's a bit more visual emphasis along the uh, along the sort of lower half of the car and it looks it, it makes it look quite rakish um i mean it doesn't have to these cars are massive um yeah. but the the alfa romeo looks really really good so that's my standout favorite i hope i hope it is as fast as it looks it's all yeah. Ferrari. Yeah, it deserves a fast car. Mm, yeah, that might be a bit yeah, of false hope. Mm. The, <laughs> we'll the Ferrari is an interesting one. We'll see. It'll definitely be red, but I'm hoping they they incorporate the Italian flag or something into the car again, like they did a couple of years ago. Um, oh, that would be nice. Break it up a bit. Yeah. Will it be red yeah. and white or red and black? <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> which one will it be? <laughs> which sponsors will be plonked? Which which sponsors will be slapped on the car? Where? Ooh. Um, we'll see that. I think the Ferrari's being unveiled this coming Wednesday, so we'll see then. But yeah, we've reached the end of the show. We've talked about all the liveries, which is which has been brilliant. But yeah, guys, get in touch with us on socials. Uh, they will all be somewhere in the descriptions for you to find and get in touch and let us know which ones your favorite liveries are but yeah we always broadcast these these shows live on facebook unfortunately this wasn't broadcast because death is terrible with technology but most of the time they're broadcast on facebook so make sure you like the f1 chronicle on facebook so that you can see the show as it airs the podcasts are all available on all of the normal podcast sites you've got amazon music youtube spotify google Podcasts, apple music omni studio verbal and pocket cast just search for the title f1 grid talk there is a massive back catalogue of shows and this one is episode 91 i believe 
So there's plenty to get stuck into and we'll be back up and running with some quali and race reviews once the season gets started. So stay tuned for that. We have a subreddit, search for F1 Grid Talk on Patreon so you can support us if you want to and help us get better mics and recording equipment uh, so that we can improve the quality for you guys. We will be back next weekend with another show. Thank you guys for coming on and thank you so much to Lucas for coming and taking the time to be our special guest. Well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, I'll pitch one thing, not my channel. Screw that. I don't like advertising myself. <laughs> I will advertise the Shambles Championship. It's going to be starting on Thursday. It's got content creators like me, Casey, Hudson, uh, Clue, a good friend of mine. We've got and uh, we've got a bunch of new drivers coming along and it's going to be absolute chaos. If you want to both admire driving one <laughs> second and then laugh hysterically at it the next, the Shambles Championship will be entertaining and should be for you. And that's every Thursday starting March 11th next week. Okay, that will all be in the description as well. As, as we say, it's going to be a shambles. So make sure you <laughs> check that out. And yes, once again, thank you for coming on. We hope to have you back soon. Uh, well, but yes. Well, I'll happily come back if I ever get invited again. I'll be, I love talking F1. And uh, even if it's liveries instead of cars going, that itself, as we've seen, there's plenty to talk about. Well, we'll see you next week then. You can host you can host the next show. Oh, boy, <laughs> I'll okay. have a time. I'll have a week off. <laughs> but thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you next time. Bye for now.